Nefertiti is for many known as an Egyptian queen of ancient Egypt, but there is many speculations of her origin. Today we will look over the possibility if Nefertiti could be of Kurdish origin or not. Before we start, don't forget to like this video, comment your opinion down below and hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss any further videos on this channel. Also, don't forget to follow us on social media so that you can take part of more regarding the Kurdish question and our organization. Lastly, you can also donate to our PayPal account in order to help us keep going with this channel. More information in the description box below. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. So, mainly Nefertiti is known as an Egyptian queen and royal wife of Akhenaten, an Egyptian pharaoh. Many things is said about the rule of Nefertiti and Akhenaten. Among many, Egypt is said to have been in its wealthiest period during their rule. But the royal couple also created a religious revolution in Egypt in which they only worshipped one god, which was called Aten, a sun god. This type of religious worshipping, called Atenism, became Egypt's state religion for 20 years before it was changed back to the traditional gods that people worshipped before the start of Atenism. The origin of Nefertiti is officially unknown, but there are different theories about it. One theory claims a close blood family relationship between Nefertiti and Pharaoh, arguing for that incest was more normalized in the ancient Egypt. The other theories tell about the very good relationships of Egypt and the various empires in modern Middle East. In the ancient empire of Mitanni, located in present Rojava, the king Tushrata ruled an empire right in the middle of the germinative lands of Mesopotamia. The king had one very special daughter, Princess Tadukhipa. The Mitanni kingdom was under a lot of pressure. They had internal conflicts with the Hurrians and external conflicts with the Semites, but had partial backup from the ancient Egypt in which marriage trades between the empires was a common thing. Tadukhipa's aunt Gilukhipa, who lived in the capital city of Mitanni called Washukani, which is the ancient name for today's Serekani in Rojava, was to travel to Egypt in order to marry the pharaoh of Egypt, named Amenhotep III. Soon enough, the pharaoh would marry Tadukhipa too, the princess of the Mitanni kingdom, even though he was at least 20 years older. When the princess Tatukhipa married the pharaoh, she changed her name. It is not clear, however, if it was willingly or if that happened on the orders of pharaoh. Her name would be Nefertiti, which means the beautiful woman has come. When the pharaoh Amenhotep III died, his oldest son Akhenaten replaced him as the new pharaoh. He was in love with the queen of Egypt and would take Nefertiti as his new wife. Now, as we pointed out in the beginning of the videos, it is not written in stone that Nefertiti was Kurdish. That is simply a theory pointed out as one of two most realistic theories by scientists. Most things back in these ancient times is only theories. Now, what tells that Mitanni was a Kurdish empire? Well, the Mitanni kingdom was actually multicultural, which means that the people who lived within the Mitanni people today belongs to not only one people in modern world, but several ones. When it was disestablished in 1260 BC, the majority of the Mitanni people would become part of the Armenian kingdom, mostly locating themselves in the Kordjun Empire, which in time would become the first name relatives to the Kurdish existence. Now, what can we list up that points for the fact that Nefertiti could be Kurdish? We know that her name means the beautiful woman has come, pointing out that she arrived from some foraging place than Egypt. There is no historical evidence that shows that Nefertiti was of Egyptian origin, even though being one of the most well-known leaders of the ancient Egypt. We know for a fact that the ancient Egypt and the Mitanni kingdom did marriage exchanges to keep their alliance between them. And we know for a fact that Nefertiti's aunt married the first pharaoh of Egypt that allegedly would marry Nefertiti later. The chances to find evidence from this time is not easy. 
Levetiti lived and ruled Egypt around 3,400 years ago, and finding evidence that has been preserved all the way to modern day is not easy, so there is a chance that we will never know the truth about all this. Maybe she was Egyptian, maybe she was Kurdish, or maybe she was Armenian, we will never know. But what do you think? Let me know in the comment section below and also don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel and follow us on Instagram so that you don't miss any further videos from this channel.